Hi guys, Brain here, and welcome to another commentary video. Today we're going to be covering the reason that it seems like most players in DBD seem to dislike indoor maps, because you would think that with like all the characters like Myers, Ghostface, Wraith, Sadako, etc., that, you know, there would be enough fans of indoor maps that it probably wouldn't get a completely bad rap. But, you know, that crowd does exist. You know, the stealth killers that really, really do thoroughly enjoy the indoor maps, especially looking at you like Scratch Mirror Myers players. But by and large, most people do dislike going to indoor maps. That includes both killers and survivors. Both crowds seem to usually hate going to indoor maps. And that's something that's kind of been a consensus among the DVD community for quite some time. So I want to break down to you exactly why this is, because I have theories on my own for both sides and why both sides actually hate indoor maps. And I feel like they'll make a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first, let's start off with killers, because aside from stealth killers, it's kind of that's the question, right? It's like, well, stealth killers will obviously love indoor maps because their whole thing is hiding and sneaking up on people. So, of course, they're going to like all the like line of sight blocking that happens on, say, like Larry's Midwich, the game, even to some extent, even though that, that that's Pallet City, USA. <laughs> but, you know, they, they like having that obscure line of vision so they can sneak up on people using their powers, especially characters like Wraith, Ghostface, all that. But other characters really, really suffer on indoor maps because the main thing is that they are unable to use their power. See, the big thing that I want to talk about here is that ease of movement is very, very important in Dead by Daylight. Being able to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible as both Survivor and Killer is very, very important. And you're going to see how this starts to really affect both sides. But talking about the killer side specifically, if you notice, there's a lot of killer powers that have high movement. Characters like Oni, Wesker, Blight, Hillbilly, that were, that really suffer because they aren't able to get from point A to point B in a, in, a, in a regular fashion using their power. So if their whole power, the whole point of their power is I go fast and I cover the map in, in a very, very short amount of time, and suddenly they're not able to do that, they start becoming more of an M1 Andy and somebody who doesn't really have much of a power to begin with, which kind of defeats the purpose of playing killers in the begin with, because the reason you play killer over survivor is because you actually have powers. You have unique things about you that are cool and fun that, that when you switch characters, that entirely changes your gameplay style as opposed to, you know, survivor, which is kind of just a giant collection of skins for the same character. And this goes not even just for movement characters, but other characters also have a tremendous amount of issues on indoor maps. Take like Trapper, for example. Trapper really thrives when he's able to put his traps inside like foliage and stuff. And obviously, not a lot of that, <laughs> if, if barely any, if you're seeing And Larry's has some weeds that grow up in some places, but like for the most part, you kind of can't hide your traps on indoor maps uh, as Trapper. Let's think of another, even like like really strong characters like Nurse, having a line of sight to know where to blink is very important for her to be able to play her character. So not being able to see where your blink will end up or where that character went when the line of sight went away, when they disappeared behind a wall, can be incredibly frustrating. I, even like, I, I've, I've watched a lot of people who play Nurse pretty consistently. Um, usually it's just Huntress main switching off to the other character. <laughs> but I've watched people play Nurse and when they get like Larry's, they get like so frustrated. <laughs> they get so frustrated, like, like immediately because they know they're going to have a bad time. So even like really strong characters like that start to really suffer. And there's also a lot of killers that require a lot of... Um, Let's say like 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 Bubba, for example, like Bubba and like Oni, for example, they, they're very like collision based characters, right? I mean, I even throw Huntress in there because of her agents, but like very like pre like precision based characters that have like have to hit those attacks like very precisely when there's just like walls everywhere. And then the, the collision in DVD is so sloppy, like it just it creates a lot of missed hits that should have just been hit because like there's literally walls and rooms everywhere where you know say something like auto haven there's just like an open field so you can kind of like adjust as you can but you know on indoor maps you're bumping into like carts windows walls <laughs> objects like it's a, like it's a mess it's a mess in there so it's like it, it, it that blocks a lot of your powers as well so essentially tldr uh, indoor maps are kind of like inherently just by design awful for characters or for killers to be able to use their powers uh, besides stealth killers, which is only like a handful of characters in the game. So a majority of the roster suffers while on an indoor map. So that's that's why. <laughs> and it goes even further than this, too, because because like one of the biggest ways that like tracking happens is through scratch marks and disturbed crows, like especially like in the beginning of the match, if you don't have lethal, like you're looking for crows to fly up and you're looking for scratch marks early in the match. But Obviously, you're not going to see the crows fly up because if you're on an indoor map, they just they, they can fly up behind a wall and that, that literally does nothing for you, like literally at all. 
And scratch marks are infamously, like, kind of confusing and hard to follow on indoor maps because they can, like, show their scratch marks in one area and then just, like, slow walk into a different room. And you're sitting there going, like, okay, well, the scratch marks ended here. Which room did they go into? And there's, like, three options. <laughs> Whereas if they did this on, say, like, like Macmillan, you know, there's like, a, there's, like, a tile over there. So you're like, okay, well, clearly they went there, you know? So it makes tracking incredibly difficult, too. So based on what I said, Based on what I've talked about and what I've said so far, you would assume that, like, survivors would actually, like, favor indoor maps, because it sounds like it's kind of, like, a really, like, a, a chore to deal with indoor maps on Killer, but quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. I said at the beginning of this video that ease of movement is probably the most important thing to have in a DBD map. Things that make DBD maps feel good, because that means killers can use their power, but also survivors really need to benefit from ease of movement as well. And obviously, indoor maps don't have good ease of, of movement, on basically any of them <laughs> and that's the frustrating for survivors too so why is that frustrating for survivors well a obviously it's just like um, the, the very easy one we're gonna get out of the way finding gens is hard on indoor maps because obviously one of the big ways that people find generators is by looking up into the sky and seeing the lights uh, of uh, uncompleted gen flashing so that big light pole that's attached to a gen that's a lot of the ways that people like find generators but on indoor maps that's not a thing so you kind of just gotta like search around which is which is time wasted and time wasted in especially on the survivor side time wasted in dbd is gen time wasted time is gen time so the time that they spend looking around for a generator they could have spent just doing one because they saw it earlier and but now they're sending it you know they're doing like a little scavenger hunt just trying to find their objective which is which is annoying um but even furthermore it gets worse because survivors need to know where to go when things hit the fan they need to know where they're going so they are able to loop properly. That's why Windows of Opportunity is such a popular perk because even if you get an indoor map, you can still see what pallets or tiles are around even on an indoor map. That way you don't get skamassed. When you're on an indoor map, obviously there's walls and rooms and everything is obscured. You don't know, let's say you're in a chase, right? Let's say you're in a chase. Let's say I am on a gen and Asadako like, you know, phases and shows up out of a TV and I go running out of the room. I go running out of the room and I can go left into the room over here or I can go forward and keep running down the hallway. I can go left into that room and I don't know what's in there yet because there's just a big wall there. And, and, and until I enter that doorway, I don't know what that loop looks like. It could be a safe pallet that I can loop for a really long time or it could be literally just a weak little path pallet and I've wasted my time. And I've gone in there, and it's just going to be an insta death. Every it feels like without Windows opportunity playing an indoor map, it feels like going into a room is like a 50-50. Like I could end up with a good resource, or I can end up with like just a window vault, and that's it. And like the fact that you're just kind of like rolling the dice, there doesn't feel like you're going. To, you're you're actually getting outplayed because you just kind of rolled the dice and got unlucky. You know, like you entered that room hoping there was something you could use as a resource, but it just ended up being useless. <laughs> and there was no way for you to have known that. So it's not like you got outplayed. There was just no way for you to know. So it's just like you're gambling all the time on when you go from room to room, unless you just like run Windows Opportunity all the time, which is like why that's a popular perk, because you you know, that Windows obviously circumvents that situation, but like not a, you can't run Windows all the time. You just can't. So like it just, it, it, it creates this frustrating situation of just like not being able to know what resources you have available to you when in reality if you're on like Macmillan Auto Haven you just go yeah that's a that's a that's an unsafe pallet I'm not going to go there or hey that is a safe pallet I'm going to I'm going to go loop there you know so I don't know I think it's just it's just frustrating but yeah those are the reasons that I believe that both sides hate indoor maps if you were somehow not paying attention up to this point killers can't really use their powers too well unless they're a stealth killer uh on indoor maps so that's pretty frustrating but also things like being able to track well go away but on the survivor side obviously your looping is going to be uh negatively affected in terms of not being able to know what resources are where but also the ability to find and complete your objectives because obviously that's obscured as well so yeah what do you think do you guys like indoor maps or do you hate indoor maps and why do you think these reasons make sense let me know down in the comments below but then that's gonna be it for today's video friends thank you so much for watching but i do upload daily so hopefully I will see you tomorrow, but if I don't, well, you know, I'll see you when I see you. Bye.